Okay, with this problem, we're going to walk through an example of a firm in a perfectly competitive market. Um, I guess we're dealing with many firms in a perfectly competitive market. Uh, it's a question uh, borrowed from Krugman Miles, Microeconomics, second edition, from the chapter on perfect competition in the supply curve. Uh, so the question asks, uh, the accompanying table presents prices for washing and ironing a man shirt taken from a survey of California dry foot cleaners in 2004. Um, and then we have a nice little graph given cities, the name of the dry cleaner, and then the price for that service. Um, starting off with number one, uh, what is the average price per shirt washed and ironed in Goleta? Um, just so you know, all of this is setting it up, and then we'll deal with, uh, we'll look at supply and demand curves and with firm cost curves uh, for this perfectly competitive market. But first, we're just kind of setting it up. So uh, to do that, uh, what are the average uh, price per shirt based uh, price per search for wash and iron in Goleta and then for Santa Barbara. So the average price for um, shirts are the following. I set up this nice little um, Excel spreadsheet. So here we have our initial table. This table here um, is just the prices in Goleta. And so we can see the average price in Goleta is $2.25. Here I, I subset it to just the city of Santa Barbara with all of the dry cleaners and their prices. And you can see the average price is $2. So the average price for dry cleaning uh, for cleaning in uh, Goleta is 225 and the average price in Santa Barbara is 2 bucks. Great. So what is the average price per shirt washed in iron in Goleta? Uh, I forgot already. 225 and then the average price in Santa Barbara is $2. So Part B asks to uh, draw a typical marginal cost and average cost curves for California cleaners in Goleta. California cleaners is this one cleaner right here in Goleta. Uh, assuming it is a perfectly competitive firm, but the firm is making a profit, so that's kind of an important note, uh, on each shirt in the short run, make mark the short run equilibrium point and shade the area that corresponds to the profit made by the dry cleaner. So uh, let me do that, just one moment. Great, so that's what we have here. So um, we have marginal costs and average costs and average total costs. Um, so marginal cost curve is this typical J-shaped line or U-shaped line. Uh, and average total cost is this usual U-shaped uh, curve. The first section here uh, reflects the spreading effect of how you could get uh, diminishing average cost for the initial levels of production. But after some point where the minimum, the minimum point here of average total cost, after some point, um, average total costs are going to start increasing as you increase production. Uh, in this in this question, we're asked to assume that it's a perfectly competitive market, uh, but this firm is making a profit on each shirt sold in the short run. Um, so for this firm to have a profit, the market price has to be above the break-even price. So this point right here, which is where marginal cost intersects with average total cost, uh, which is also the minimum value of average total cost, that's our break-even point. That's the lowest point of average total cost. Um, so long as we have a market price um, above average total cost, so um, that means we'll have economic profit. Um, if the market price is below average total cost, uh, we're going to have an economic loss. So first off, uh, we are given it for California cleaners in Goleta. The price of California cleaners in Goleta, if you saw the chart, is California cleaners is two dollars and twenty-five cents. So that's the current market price right here. Um, next, we need to find out what is the quantity that the firm produces. So we find out how much the firm is producing by finding out where. Um, the current market price intersects marginal costs. This is this point right here uh, at a level of Q1, so kind of an arbitrary level. The, the exact level doesn't matter. Um, if the firm produces at this quantity, given this is the current market price or marginal revenue, um, we know that this firm is going to be maximizing its uh, its profits or minimizing loss. In this case, we deal with the profits, so it's maximizing profits. So the firm is going to take the current market price, it's going to go over here, find out where it intersects the marginal cost curve, and that's the quantity it chooses. So that's step one, is take the price, hit marginal cost, and get, get quantity. After that, now the question is, well, how much is this firm making per shirt? 
We're told that this firm is making a profit, so we need to know that we need to make sure that this intersection of the current price of 225 and marginal cost is above the average total cost curve, um, because this is telling us that each shirt produced is making an economic profit equal to this amount right here. The difference between that 225 and the uh, the where this quantity hits the average total cost curve. So this firm is making an economic profit equal to this distance, the distance between E1 and where this vertical line hits the average total cost curve. Great. So part C, uh, now assume that uh, 225 is the short run price equilibrium in Golita. Draw a typical short run demand and supply curve for the market. Label the equilibrium point. So first off, what's a typical short run demand and supply curve for the market? That's what we're so I created down here. So we have the market for dry cleaning. I guess it's the market for short cleaning. On the vertical axis, we have price with this vertical axis. And on the horizontal axis, we have quantity. Uh, we then have a supply curve right here. And then we have a demand curve right here. So we're told that uh, 225 is the short run equilibrium price in Goleta. So the short run equilibrium price is where the supply curve intersects the demand curve. So that means that intersection, this point here, has to be at that price of 225. Um, and then the equilibrium quantity, which we're going to just call arbitrary Q star, you know, it's um, the, we don't know the exact number. Uh, it's the point where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded, uh, where these two lines intersect. So this point right here uh, is our equilibrium point at the center. And our equilibrium price is 225 because we're given it. And then our equilibrium quantity is Q star because that's what we are going to label it. Moving on to part D, we're now told that uh, observing profits in the Golita area, another dry cleaning service, Diamond Cleaners, enters the market. In Golita, it charges uh, $1.95 per shirt. What is the average? new average price of washing and ironing a shirt in Goleta, and then illustrate this effect of the entry of this new firm on the average price of Goleta um, by a shift in the short run supply curve and demand curve both. So let's just start off with the first part. So what is the new average price of washing and ironing in Goleta? So I'm going to go up to this table and take all the Goleta values again, and we're going to add in that 195 for the new firm. It's called Diamond Cleaners. So here is uh, these are all of the um, shirt cleaners in Goleta, and I, so it's the full table here. Here's just subsetted to Goleta, so we have a new entrant called Diamond. Uh, it's also in Goleta, and it charges 195. So that brings the new average, you know, the sum of all these divided by the number, to two dollars and twenty cents for an average price of the shirt. So move it back. The new average price is the new average price is two dollars and twenty cents. So now we're going to illustrate the effect of the entry uh, on the average price, Goleta price of a shirt in the short run demand and supply curve. And here we go. So before we had two twenty five as the equilibrium price right here, where um, the supply curve S sub naught intersected the demand curve D sub naught. Uh, we added in a new firm, which brought down the average price. So we added in this new firm, and it's trying to kind of undercut its competitors and brought down the average price or the equilibrium price down to 220, um, because we're told. So we're asked to represent this with a shift out in the supply curve. So we now have this new supply curve, S sub naught. Uh, and now the new equilibrium price and quantity is shown by the new intersection of our old demand curve, which hasn't changed at all, and the new supply curve. Because the demand curve is uh, downward sloping, we can expect a lower price with the new average price of 220. Uh, and we can also expect um, quantity is increased, going from uh, Q0 to Q1. Uh, and then, you know, the wording of the question says, uh, illustrate the effect of entry on the average Goleta price of a shirt on the short run demand curve, the, the demand curve, the supply curve, the demand curve are both. So we're saying that the demand curve hasn't shifted at all um, because 
uh, nothing has affected demand yet. The only thing that's changed is this new firm has entered the market. Part E asks, uh, assume that California Cleaners now charges the new average price, that's 220, and then just breaks even. That is, it makes zero economic profit at this price of 220. Show the likely effect of the entry on the diagram from Part B. So first of all, I'll show you the diagram from Part B, uh, and then we'll talk about the change. So here's the diagram from Part B. Remember, at the old price of 225, we had this nice little economic profit. But now we're saying that at the new price of 220, um, the firm makes zero economic profit. They just break even. So what is that going to look like? It's going to look like the following. So we have our new price of $2.20, and we're told that there's zero economic profits. So step one, given this price, um, the firm is going to choose a quantity such that this price, where it inter uh, intersects with marginal cost, is the quantity the firm produces. So you need to move your marginal cost and average total cost curves such that 220 intersects right there where marginal cost hits the bottom of uh, average total cost. It's the min this is this is this point right here is the minimum of average total cost, giving this Q2 level. So with the price, the market price at this level, um, the firm chooses to produce quantity two. The reason why is because that's where marginal cost intersects it at quantity two, um, and that's also at the point where average total cost is minimized. So marginal cost is intersecting with Q2 is intersecting with average total cost and um, the current price. So at this price of $2.20 and at this level of production, uh, this firm, the average cost of each unit produced uh, is exactly equal to the price it sells. So it's not making any money off anyone. You know, it costs $2.20 to produce it because that's what the average total cost line tells us. Uh, and then the firm gets $2.20 for each unit sold because that's what the definition of the price is. So this firm is making zero economic profit. Um, and then we could have shown this, but I mean, the question didn't ask us, but imagine a price that's below $2.20. So let's just imagine a price of like $2 and, um, let's see, $2 and 10 cents. Let's say this right here is $2 and 10 cents. This line that I'm drawing right there, make it a little bigger. Let's say this line right here that I'm moving around is $2.10. And let's say that's the current market price. So this being a perfectly competitive market and firms are price takers, that means the firm is going to have to choose um, the level of production given that this is the you know current market price. So it's going to choose a level of production where the price hits their marginal cost. So it's going to choose this quantity of production right here. So that is to say, given the market price here, the firm's going to go over and see what quantity is associated with that marginal cost, and it's going to set its production here. So given a uh, average total cost of that quantity of production, so it's going to have uh, an average total cost for each unit produced of this amount up here, so something like 225, let's say. So for each unit sold, it's bringing in about 220. It's it cost about sorry, it's bringing in about 210 because that's what we're saying this line is here. It costs about 225. So on each product sold, it's losing about 15 cents each. So it's losing uh, if the price is anywhere below 220, it's going to lose the quantity of um, this little area right here. On each unit sold, it's going to lose the difference between where this quantity hits the average total cost curve and where that quantity hits the marginal cost curve. However, none of that was asked here. Um, so hopefully this video was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know um, in the comments. And thanks and have a good day. Bye.